we'll have Almero Stein. He'll be talking about Inclusive React, a survival guide. Fun fact, uh, we found out he's not Australian. Apparently, I could say that about everybody, so we'll just add that. But he's actually from South Africa. So please give a warm welcome to Almero Stein. Thank you. Um, thanks for coming to this talk on uh, inclusive React. Now, today I'd like to present you with a survival guide to survive the jungle of making your apps more inclusive to all users out there. And what we are talking about, we're talking about um, users um, supporting users no matter how they choose to interact with their devices or with the web in general. My name, as you heard, is Almiro Steyn. I work for a company called Q Delft right here in the Netherlands. And you can find me on Twitter or on my blog after the talk. Um, as this is a lightning talk, I'd like to get some information to you as quickly as possible. So there'll be some QR codes on the screen. If you have some scanner apps, get them ready so I can get these links to your telephones as fast as possible. But don't be pressurized. There'll be also a master code at the end of the presentation so you can find this presentation again. Why are we wanting to talk about inclusive uh, React or accessible applications? That is because inaccessible things are out of reach things. And the same is true for web applications. Inaccessible parts of web applications are out of reach for many users uh, out there. And we'd like to fix this. In fact, it can be so out of reach that it can block users from using, using our applications at all. And what are we looking at here? Here are some examples of code. On the left, we've got the inaccessible blocking version. On the right, the accessible fixed version. And from top down, we've got setting focus outline to zero or none in your CSS. If you do this, keyboard users can no longer interact with your website because you take away the outline showing them which elements are currently focused. To fix it, you either don't do it or you implement another visual style that you find more pleasing as long as this, it is clear. Then we've got a span labeling and input. Now, there's no way that this text is programma programmatically tied to the input. And therefore, screen reader users find it hard to know what these inputs are about. And screen reader users, those are users that rely on, on software to read the screen back to them because they are unable to see the screen well enough to interact with it. We fix it by instead of using a span to label, we just use the HTML label element and use a four ID linkage. Um, and now it is accessible and the text is available to everyone. Then we've got a button with only an icon and no text. Once again, screen reader users do not know what the intention of this button is. So just fix it by using an HTML uh, or, or by, by providing some uh, alternative text uh, to your button. Uh, these ARIA attributes you will read more about in the resources I'm about to share with you, so don't worry about it right now. Three more examples. We've got the famous turning a div into a button by giving it some style that makes it look like a button and an on-click handler. Um, keyboard users and screen reader users cannot use this. Um, just turn it into an HTML button. Less code, it's already accessible, and it is stable. Also, an anchor without an href is no link. Just give it an href, and it becomes a navigable item because the first one cannot be found by keyboard users at all. And then finally, we've got something with terrible text contrast. And this is kind of what it looks like, especially if you stand with your telephone outside in the sun, uh, and there's no good contrast used. You cannot read the text anymore. So just give it some good contrast. And once again, this element becomes uh, usable to everyone. But these are some examples that I've shown you now, how can you go out there and find these examples in your own applications? Now, for that, you need a Swiss Army knife to cut through these issues. And that Swiss Army knife is the accessibility page in the React docs. Now, the official docs have got a page on accessibility. It tells you uh, why we are doing accessibility. It tells you what accessibility is. And it also provides you with tons of good resources that you can use to make your React apps more inclusive and accessible. But this doc contains a lot of really new terms. Um, don't worry about it, just names for standards, just new terminology, that as you go through it, you will become aware of what it's all about. For instance, the WCAG stands for the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. Now, this is a W3C specification that tells you how to make web content more accessible to all people out there. 
quite a technical document, a lot of information. Um, so maybe you can go to a checklist like this, which presents on one page what the points are in the WCAG, what they're all about, before just diving into the document itself. Another one, WAI ARIA. Now, Web Accessibility Initiative, Accessible Rich Internet Applications. What a mouthful. Just another specification by the W3C that tells us how to make web applications more accessible. And that's typically applications like what we create with JavaScript, the applications we create with React. Um, and it talks about the, the really interactive elements on our uh, applications like tab controls, drop down menus. How do we make this and build it in a way that most users out there can interact with it? But the baseline of creating an inclusive uh, application is semantic JSX and HTML. What does that mean? On the left, we've got an exam example of non-semantic JSX, because we are just using the div tag. And in HTML, the div tag has no real meaning, aside from that it can create containers in your uh, HTML where you put things in. You can rather make it semantic by using elements with meaning. And these elements not only structure your HTML, but this meaning is exported into the DOM and to things like screen readers. And by the way, if you use semantic uh, HTML, the crawlers from search engines can more easily find and index your site, so you become more findable. And the take home is that HTML should not equal the div tag alone. There's a treasure chest of HTML elements out there. Go and have a look at it. The message is if you're trying to implement a function where there's already an element for, just use that element. It's implemented in the browser. It's stable. Everybody can use it. Um, and you can always get an expected result without you having to worry about the code. OK, so we've got the concepts now, and we've tried to implement it in our applications. How do we know that we've achieved an application that is more inclusive? Number one, go test with your keyboard. Plug out your mouse. Use your tab, shift tab, enter, and arrow keys to navigate through your application. You should be able to reach every area in your application. You should be able to interact with everything in your application. If you can't, a lot of users out there will be blocked from using your application. So consider fixing this. Then we've got, as React developers, something like ESLint plugin JSX A11Y. And A11Y is short for accessibility. And this is a plugin for ESLint that extends the check, uh, the rule set of ESLint by about 30 accessibility uh, rules that will check your JSX if you're doing something that will later on impede the accessibility of your application. It can be integrated in most IDEs out there, and you can get real-time feedback if you're doing something in your application that um, will later cause problems. And by the way, if you're using Create React App, this plugin is already uh, installed as part of the uh, configuration. You can extend it and export those, uh, those errors to your IDE. Brilliant first line of defense. Then, of course, we've got X and X Core. Now, this stands for the Accessibility Engine. And this is available as a browser plugin or as an NPM package that you can download and integrate, for instance, in your end-to-end -end tests. And it's an accessibility audit tool. And it runs accessibility scans on uh, the rendered HTML of your application. It will report those findings if there are any violation. It will tell you why it's a finding, how to fix it. This I use on a daily basis. Really an awesome tool. Try it out in your browser um, and see what you think about it. But there's also a wrapper for React, and it's called ReactX. And this brings the power of X into your React dev environment. You can um, configure it so that every time that your dev server reloads, that it will automatically run these accessibility audits on the rendered HTML in the browser, and it will report any findings on the console. So really, second line of defense, brilliant real-time information. Um, can't get better than this. Then, of course, as uh, finally, we want to test with screen readers. If we want to support users that rely on screen readers, we need to at least test that our application is playing nice with screen readers out there. Um, this uh, link is, again, to the React uh, accessibility docs. There's a section on screen readers. It tells you which screen readers you most likely want to uh, test with. It also has some links that can get you started in, uh, in testing your applications with screen readers so that you make sure that you are not blocking screen reader users out there. And that's all about that I have time for today. Um, thank you for your time. The slides are already up online. And let's go out there and make the web more inclusive. Very nice, very nice, excellent. <laughs>
Thank you.